One of the key factors when you're playing the Eagles is A.J. Brown and how do you stop him? Not a lot of teams do, but let's talk about one of the ways that he is so deadly and how the Chiefs can try and counteract it and what the Eagles will do to counteract the Chiefs' counteraction. So let's just get into it. First, this chart, which I'm really only going to focus on A.J. Brown here, but I figured I'd show the whole chart in case you were interested in seeing the other stuff. Uh, but at the top of the list, you see A.J. Brown splits when he is in man versus when he is in zone. When he's in man, he is dominant. Fourth best pro football focus grade, and his yards per route ran, that's what Y. PRR means is 3.39. That's an insane total. That's ridiculously high. Anything over two is absurd. So uh, getting it over three, that's nearly unheard of for an entire season. In zone, he's still good, but not quite as dominant. Uh, 23rd PFF grade, 195 yards per route ran. You'll take those numbers any day of the week, but they're just not quite the dominance that he has in man. So that's just worth noting. It's really, when he gets these one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside, he destroys them. Now, it is worth noting a little bit that the Chiefs like to play some man coverage that isn't necessarily cover one. They'll play some two safety deep, uh, you know, cover two man plays. They will do that. But, you know, again, they like the blitz as well. You do have to think that there will be opportunities with A.J. Brown one-on-one -on, -one on the outside at times in this one, although maybe not a ton. So now we got to go over to this chart. These are the, uh, the four Chiefs with the most amount of snaps. Uh, Legereus Need, I put at the top of the list. Worth noting, he, you know, he has an injury. I believe he will be able to play in the Super Bowl, but I don't know that for certain, so just worth noting there. But you see, he is very good in man and in zone. So, uh, 67.3 PFF grade, which is 25th best in football in man, whereas in zone, a 73.5 grade. So, actually a little bit of a better grade, but it's not quite as uh, good compared to his peers as typically your grade is higher the more zone you play, interestingly enough. Trent McDuffie also can do both very well. He's tend to play, he tends to play more in the slot, though, so not really someone who's going to impact A.J. Brown, you would think, too much, although they'll put A.J. Brown in the slot as well, and again, maybe a little bit more on that later. I actually do think McDuffie could have an impact on Brown, even though you might not think it. Um, you also have Jalen Watson, who has been kind of okay at both man and zone, and then Joshua Williams, who has the weirdest splits out of maybe any player in football, as he is legitimately one of the worst corners in football when he is playing man, but legitimately one of the best when he is playing zone, so make sure you don't put him one-on-one -on -one A.J. Brown is the mindset, but really, uh, Sneed would be the guy, you would assume, if assuming that he can go. If not, it will probably be Jalen Watson. Let's go over to the film, and the reality is I don't think I even really need to talk too much about how A.J. Brown can dominate these one-on-one -on -one matchups, but I'm going to anyways because it is worth noting. This one is actually going to be kind of a fake screen pass, uh, and then A.J. Brown is going to go deep and just watch what happens. I mean, watch how, you know, again, this is what A.J. Brown does. You give him a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside, he wins those one-on-one -on -one matchups. It doesn't have to be man coverage. It could be, say, a cover three zone or something like that. Uh, although the Chiefs, again, don't do that a ton, which is probably a benefit to them in this football game. But I think it's just fair to say, listen, this is what you're going up against. You remember last year when uh, no one would double Jamar Chase and every time they didn't, uh, he would just completely torch them. Uh, it's the same thing with a, you know, with A.J. Brown. You got to make sure that you're paying him extra attention. You have to respect A.J. Brown. And I think the Chiefs will. I do. If you look at the conference championship, they actually kind of showed a perfect blueprint on how to handle a dominant receiver like Jamar Chase. Right here is a great example of what they're doing, which is this two safety deep coverage, which means that, yes, uh, if Joe Burrow were to get outside the pocket, he could run for a lot of yards. So that's maybe an opportunity where Hertz's scrambling ability could come into play. I, I definitely think it could. However, if we're talking about stopping A.J. Brown, this is an effective way to stop A.J. Brown. Putting an extra safety on top of him uh, just makes it more difficult. Now, on this play, this was the fourth down play where Burrow decided to throw it into double coverage, and it worked. Jamar Chase was able to win the double coverage matchup and get a big completion on that one. Listen, he's Jamar Chase. He's awesome. A.J. Brown's A.J. Brown. He's awesome. There's a chance of this happening, even if you put two guys on him. But you know what? If he's going to consistently win double teams, you're just losing. Like, that's just the reality of the situation. You have to trust that if you put two guys on A.J. Brown, the reality is on most snaps, you will win, and he won't be able to consistently win 
against double teams. However, let's go over here because just because you put two safeties on him does not necessarily mean there aren't ways that you can find a way to win. Something like this where it's going to be a uh, cover two zone. So, okay, you know, two safeties, not both on uh, Jamar Chase. And in fact, this isn't even a Jamar Chase play. This is a T. Higgins play. But again, another very dominant outside receiver, right? When this play begins, you're going to see that actually the safety Brian Cook moved in a little bit. And because of that, he's not quite in the position he would like to be. For Philadelphia, a team that loves to utilize play action, you have to imagine if they will try to do this to get safeties out of position and to get AJ Brown some one-on-one -on -one matchups. But again, just because you get someone out of position does not mean you're guaranteed to have success. Watch as you're going to see Brian Cook actually does a great job of coming back, knocking the ball away, and getting an interception out of all of that. But still, there's maybe a window there for the Eagles to exploit, but also you have to be careful because the, you know, Chiefs players still have a bunch of guys in the secondary who absolutely can make plays. So for Philadelphia, this is where, you know, I talked about Trent McDuffie might come in the slot corner for them, the guy who typically plays slot corner, although he has played a little outside as well. Uh, what you're going to see on this play is what you sometimes do when there's a safety over the top. There is a safety over the top of A.J. Brown. So, hey, you don't have to use A.J. Brown as a deep threat. He can win in other ways. In fact, when he was, uh, you know, with Tennessee, kind of the main thing he was known for was these over-the-middle routes. It wasn't until, uh, you know, I mean, he could always do those deep routes, but it wasn't until Philadelphia where he really became known as being like a deep shot guy. Look at how when this play begins, Hurts takes the snap. He looks towards uh, the direction of A.J. Brown. Extra attention was getting on a different receiver, and now A.J. Brown is just, I mean, as open as it gets in the NFL. And listen, this is where the, you know, Trent McDuffie comes in. If he's over the middle, he probably plays better coverage here. Uh, you know, in general, the Kansas City Chiefs play very good coverage over the middle. On this play, A.J. Brown is able to make the grab and do some great work after the catch. He's actually going to end up, I mean, look at what he, look at what he does. He gets the ball all the way to the 10-yard line on that play. Definitely getting him the ball frequently is a dangerous thing if you're a Chiefs fan uh, and an exciting thing if you're a Philadelphia Eagles fan. But, you know, this might be the right strategy for both teams to employ. Uh, for the uh, Chiefs, force them to throw it to your good coverage players over the middle and try to make it work that way. And for the Eagles, hey, it might be still better to do that than to throw the ball in the double coverage down the field or maybe throw the ball in the double coverage down the field, see what happens. Definitely, though, I think there's ways the Chiefs can attack A.J. Brown, and they can limit A.J. Brown. And it'll be interesting to see what the Eagles do to counter that counter, uh, even more so than what I talked about. Yeah, these over-the-middle routes uh, kind of, uh, you know, methodically move down the field. I actually think running the ball might be the best way to get teams out of this coverage. This is where, you know, you run the ball to set up other stuff definitely can come into play. But as a whole, I mean, this is definitely stuff that I think that, you know, it should be interesting. And the reality is, could be the difference in the Super Bowl. If the Chiefs can limit A.J. Brown, that could be enough to win them a football game. And if they can't, that could be enough to lose them a football game. It could matter that much. One player could matter that much, uh, which may makes it crazy to think that uh, the Titans gave up on him for just a mid-first round pick. And now we're talking about him as maybe the key piece of the Super Bowl. Kind of crazy stuff. But yeah, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always... Thanks for watching. If you like movies, check out my movie review channel. Every single movie title you see on the screen, I have a video about coming out within the next two weeks. I'm uploading a video every day for two weeks, so uh, definitely make sure you're subscribed there. The link is in the description below. I got some other stuff on there too, some like breakdowns of certain scenes I like and things like that, so check it out.